Hey, Harry, what's up? Adam, what's up, man? I'm so glad you're on the show tonight. Yeah, I'm excited to be there, too. I'm just on the 59 right now. The 59? Don't you mean the 5? No, I'm pretty sure it's the 59. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, we're getting pretty close to showtime, so if you could kind of hurry it up, that'd be great. Harry, just give me a second here. I just got to get some Hi. food real quick. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. What well, can I get started for Good. You? Can I get a number 59, no onions, uh, protein style, please? 59, yeah, dude. So that's 59 meats? Uh, you guys don't have a, a, a like, a, a meal, 59? I feel no. like I, no? No, one, two, and three. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I've already, oh, well, okay. Um, one, two, and three, sorry. Can I, can I get a number two then, please? Two. Yeah, no onions, protein style. You got it. Can I do a chocolate shake as well? Is that ball? Actually, Instead you, of the drink? Uh, yeah. So it was 59.59. All right, sweet. $59 for a burger? All right, whatever, Adam, enough clowning around. I need you here. Yeah, yeah, no worries at all, man. I'm just pulling in right now. I'll be there in uh, right about 59 seconds. Ugh, are we gonna hear this all year? Don't we have a show to do tonight? Oh, live show? No script? What could possibly go wrong? There's no one clapping. There's no one clapping. This is Hello, everybody. Awkward. It's Cowley Live. I'm Harry Arnett, and that's Jeff Newbarth. He's the executive producer of the entire Cowley Media Productions empire. This is our worst nightmare. We're doing a live show, and there's no audience. Yeah, but don't you love the graphic enhancement? Because I bet people have figured out what we're doing yeah, here. Apparently, we've saved a little money in our yeah. graphics department. We went straight PowerPoint back yeah. here. Thanks, Florida. But it's the end of the show, so <laughs> save your tears till the end of the show. Jeff and I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of look back on season three, The Trace of Callaway Live and some of our favorite moments from it. And we did Callaway Live a little differently this year, I thought. I know, we've done a lot of things differently. I don't know if you remember, we did this kind of recap two years ago, and I think we're taking it a little more seriously now, because <laughs> I actually shaved. You shaved, you got the jacket I, I on? Actually, I actually brought a tie somewhere in here. Did I, just, you? I couldn't figure out how to uh, tie it. You look it, great, the shoes I'm are really, awesome. Uh, how about this? The shoes are The awesome. official shoe of Callaway Live. Look at that. We got the same shoe on. Yeah. This we is didn't outstanding. Plan that. We didn't but this year, we did, we did it, as we said, we did it a little differently. Yeah. Season one of Callaway Live, um, which was groundbreaking mm -hmm. at the time. Now it just seems like old hat that we're in an empty studio. Right. But season one of Callaway Live, we did 20, I think 25 shows that year, 26 consecutive weeks live show. I know, that was crazy. Why did we do what, that? What were we thinking? What were we thinking? Well, you know, I, I think the one thing that was fun about that year was we had no idea what we were doing. And clearly it should. As opposed to now, where we doing, obviously know what we're totally doing now. Totally we know what we're doing now. But doing it live, there's certain energy to it. Um, but there's also some downsides to doing it live. So I think we've gotten smarter and wiser as we get older, which clearly is happening. I like that. And we did it in blocks. Yeah. Which is uh, different. We also have a guy walking around making a lot of noise. Yeah. Which is At least someone's in here. At least someone's in here. Hey, Lexi can edit that out. Here we go. Um, and we did it differently this year. So we right. had we did it actually in blocks. And our first block, we came, I felt like we came roaring right out of the gate. Yeah. I mean, it's it's always when we get that letter from the network that we're renewed for another year, and that's really just a two-second conversation between us. You want yeah. to do it? Sure. Yeah, yeah let's, let's do, do it again. again. Um, we wanted to come out big, and we wanted to get some great guests. And we've always wanted to have a Hollywood A-lister. We always love having sportscasters on here, and, and block one certainly didn't disappoint. Put them all together, and you have block one. And here's some of the best from block one. What is that like to get that kind of call? Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it at this time. I had hopes that somewhere down the line, Bob would, quote, pass Die? the torch. Oh, no. <laughs> Bob doesn't watch the show. Harry. Bob doesn't watch the show. Harry. It's not right. Bob's my friend. <laughs> Don't say that about a friend. Die of laughing at how funny the show is. Yes. At your opening go. monologue. Yes. I think, yeah. I think yeah. it was, uh, yeah. uh, I, th I knew it would at some point be a part of the Olympic Games. It wasn't real. I was hoping that that would continue in South Korea for the Winter Games and then Tokyo and beyond that. But when I did get the call, it surprised me because we didn't know when Bob was going to decide that he had done enough. He's done 11 primetime Olympics. That record won't be touched in all likelihood. He's been on 12 Olympics as the host, so the opportunity to get to do it is pretty neat. He feels like he got to the end of his run, and it's great because he didn't retire. He's transitioning to doing more baseball, more of the journalism, long-form stuff he likes to do. And he said he felt like somebody was ready 
with the ability to come in and do the job, which has set me up for complete failure. <laughs> so looking forward to that. Today, when we when Luke came in, we're doing the fitting, and Nate, one of the guys who was doing our fitting, was like, "Who, uh, who hey, worked uh, me pretty hard?" Yeah, and he was saying, "Hey, Luke, do this real quick. Say, hey, uh, this shaft seems a little little stiff. What, what do you suggest I do?" And I was like, no, don't say it, don't, don't do it, don't say it. You should probably get those kind of things all the time. Has anyone actually asked you to start an actual fraternity for old guys, like after yeah. the movie? Yeah, like a wealthy Florida guy <laughs> wanted to hire me to like start a fraternity for him. And I was like, I, I don't, I like the idea, but I, I don't want to move to uh, Fort Lauderdale right now. <laughs> kind of trying to work a little. I guess golf clubs are kind of like that. Yeah. Like an old guy fraternity. Yeah, yeah, they are. The 19th <laughs> hole can get a little fraternity like. And yeah, I never, I was never in a fraternity, but I can, my dad went to Dartmouth and he was in, I guess, one of those kind of iconic fraternities. That like Animal House. Like Animal House, House. yeah. Um, but yeah, g golf can be, have some camaraderie. I love Luke Wilson. I think he's still here, actually. Yeah, he's, he's hanging out with the kegerator over there. <laughs> Luke he's became, something else. He made very good friends with the rest of uh, our team here. He did. He was here for something like 17 or 18 hours. <laughs> he might have been. Mm -hmm. He left when the beer ran out. Well, there is think, that. As they normally do. But there we've gotten that. to be, I think, pretty good friends with a lot of guys that have been on the show. And I'd put right at the top of that list Irving Azoff, who has really become a good friend of ours and a big fan, fan of this show in particular. And he had us at the forum again which we did a show last, uh, or season two, yeah, yeah. With, uh, with Adam Levine. Right. And then Irv said, come to the Forum and do a whole bunch of shows there. So we did. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, Callaway Live on the road at the Forum in L.A. Think about all the great historical things that have happened in the Forum, right? You know, you had the Lakers winning titles. You had some of the best concert performers in the history of music. And Harry and Callaway, Callaway Live. Live. So that it was great. Sense. And I, I got to I got to show off some of the pipes singing with Philip Bailey, which I know do everyone enjoys. Do, do we have to see that again? Oh. Well, I hear that you're uh, awesome and you're falsetto. I, I just, somebody, yeah. they just have been walking through <laughs> saying, telling me. I, I told Philip, I said, here's the I good news, bad news situation. Uh, did I mention uh, Easy Lover in high school at all? Did I tell you guys a story? <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said that. But um, I said, the good news is, I know that that song by heart because it, it means a lot to me the bad news is i only know your part i don't yeah. know the phil collins part so if we ever sang it i would have to be you and you would have to be phil collins <laughs> because i hit the uh because i hit the i'll just do the high part you're the one who wants to hold her right that's not bad <laughs> he's way too nice because i could see did you guys see philip when i did that he went like this <laughs> Oh. Oh. So I didn't know if like you threw your so back you would or be something like that. Easy love, oh. to get a hold on you, but baby. You sing that note, okay? Yeah, okay. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. I was going to sing Phil's part. Yeah, okay. I get, easy love, to get a hold on you, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was on academic probation in college. <laughs> Which pretty much, How soon? Uh, like sophomore year, yeah, right out of the gate. Which pretty much ended the golf career because yes. then I couldn't compete. So then from there, I kind of was just at a crossroads of like, what else do I love? And I had always enjoyed entertainment, improv, acting. And so at that point, I decided I wanted to be an actor. And then when I got to Hollywood after dropping out of college and I wasn't getting auditions, I was like, this stand-up comedy. Well, <laughs> let's, let's try that. I have some, I have some free time yes. right now. It's late at night. There's alcohol and bunk beds involved. Yeah. I think I'll go for that. So what was that like getting started? Because that's a, that's a really tough, very competitive yeah. field. I mean, honestly, I think... Being a, a, a past, like, serious golfer is very similar because you're by yourself. You prepare your material, like, you work on your swing, you go to open mics, like, you go to a driving range, and then instead of tournaments, you have uh, either one-night gigs or just, like, a golf tournament Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're on the road at a comedy club. And you're by yourself a lot, working on your craft, and... I think the solitude of my journey in golf prepared me for the solitude and loneliness of stand-up comedy. And I'm <laughs> 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 no, but <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now it feels like Dr. Phil. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs>
a little bit. Actually, it took a longer amount of time for me to realize how to control my own world. And, and it was listening to Howard Stern, where Stern had a group of people in, the, in his studio that worked for him, but he made them part of the show. And I thought, I, I like that concept. And I you know, broached uh, my business partners and said, I'd like to put these guys on the air. And they're like, there's no way we're going to put those guys on the air. And I said, if they're not on the air, I don't want to do it. And we just, we've been in it for 10 years now, and it, and it works. And it's, I'm glad that I, I took the time at ESPN, developed that, but this is the most fun I've ever had. But I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have had the courage to do it if I didn't hear Stern do it and realize how he did it and get personalities that you may not care about, but you'll care about them because I care about them and try to bring out those personalities. So uh, I, I was lucky at the right time with the right people. Well, it's kind of inverted, too, because a lot of people that make it big on TV, they look at the radio thing as just sort of a necessary evil or maybe an offshoot. But you you sort of left that world to concentrate solely on that enterprise, which I think is really different. I still think radio is the best medium we have because TV, if you're doing it's this... for these guys. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with... I mean, with, McLovin is a great-looking guy. Don't get me wrong, but... <laughs> <laughs> they knew that we were coming down to something important, and that's how they got dressed. I know. I know. Like, that, like, I know. They got dressed up. I like it. Fritzy's got the same color as McLovin. McLovin's matching over here on uh, Seton's thread going through there and Paulie's like, I'm not doing anything these guys are doing. Jake is Here's your headline, though, Harry. Fritzy has underwear on today. And, <laughs> Thank you and, very much. And he, and he normally does. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. He just I'd forgotten how much great, how many great guests we had in Block 2. Yeah, I mean, that was so much fun when Dan and the guys came in here and, and spent the day with us. I mean, it was awesome. I liked the part when they came and they spent the entire day, like you saw, and then hung out with us. I, those are my favorites when the guests take the time to come and spend almost an entire day with us, which yeah. you, you saw there with Dan and the Danettes. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and I thought the other thing that was really interesting is, you know, you see it on air and you always wonder, like, uh, is the camaraderie and the is that just playing for the cameras and stuff like this? Like people, if they see this, our relationship, right, they probably think, oh, Harry and Jeff hang out all the time. Yeah, and we all know not, that's not, not so the much. Case. No, no, no almost so never. But those guys, you could tell, enjoy each other's company and and totally what you see on the air is as authentic as the rest of the hours. Well, he today. mentioned that too. Dan did mm -hmm. about wanting the people to see the relationship among the crew right. with the Danettes and right. drawing inspiration from the Stern Show, yeah. which we do as well. Yeah. And that's one of the things I think that is the most fun for us is coming together to work on a piece of, of content on a show mm -hmm. that we think people are going to like. And then introducing to you guys watching um, people that we think you should know about or maybe you already do know about, yeah. but getting to see them in a different setting. That was definitely the next block. Not only did we get to introduce people to friends of ours like Brian Nickel, the CEO mm -hmm. of Taco Bell, who's doing awesome things with that brand, right. but also we had Matt Ryan on the show. I know, that was that was kind of the the, the the highlight of the year for me. First of all, why don't we have the Arnets? He is the Danettes, why can't we have the we Arnets have on the, the show? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's work on that for next year. But, you know, we, we actually, it is very, very difficult to surprise you. Almost impossible. Well, I don't you know guys know I don't like surprises. So well, I know you I, don't I, like surprises. I like to be entertained, and I right. like for us to think differently. I do not like surprises, and you guys knew that, and you said, well, it doesn't matter. We're going to do this anyway. Right, so we pulled off this surprise of having Matt Ryan come in town, getting him to headquarters, having him here most of the day without you realizing it, and then sneaking him onto the show. That was awesome. Still a moment I'll never forget. Yeah. When I first saw this, I thought, is this a stunt? Is this a gag? Is this real? Coming in, uh, I think in just a few weeks, you'll be able to get married oh. in a Taco Bell in Las Vegas wedding chapel. Yeah, I mean, how? What better way to make your parents proud? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Though well, the catering's all set. That's absolutely. always a big issue. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, so yeah, we uh, we built our first Taco Bell on the Strip in Las Vegas, and as part of it, we have a wedding chapel area in the top, um, which makes total sense. Yeah, we 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 were laughing about that in our group because we were wondering like who are the single people our group so we could send some people up there yeah. it's, it's quite a deal i think it's 600 bucks yeah. you get married you get the full catered i mean I dj don't, I wouldn't the recommend whole end going deep on taco bell on your wedding night but some people might you never you know. know we do sell we sell beer and alcohol in there so you know it's no different than most weddings i've been to if she's know. gonna stay with you through through that then she's yeah. probably in it 
right for the long haul. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. His uh, gift is his gift is complete. Hold on, hold on. Okay, he's leaving. Uh, He's like, Harry, you never know what's going. We can edit all this out. Don't Harry, uh, actually, your gift is very simple. Okay. You're gonna sing? Yeah. No. Uh, your gift is that I'm not your guest tonight. Your real guest for Callaway Live is number two from Boston College, Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan. <laughs> I mean, football's so big now. People are so into it. Year uh, round. Man. Year I round, exactly. How you guys survive that year round uh, fishbowl now? No, I was working out this morning um, out here. I got up early, got in a workout, and I, at the gym I was at, I mean, they had on NFL Network Good Morning Football, and I'm like, it's 5.45, <laughs> 6 o'clock in the morning. Here it is. Like, this is on. It's May. There's not another game for, you know, 120 days. This is crazy. So Let's go love through it. every one of Matt Ryan's interceptions in 2016. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah. Although that would Luckily, be. It was a short that's list. a short show. Short there you go. <laughs> it was a short list. Matt Ryan, I couldn't believe that. I, I think yeah. so many things happened that day that when I look back, I'm like, that was just meant to be a magical day. My daughter came to the show, which right. she hardly ever does. Right. And then after the show, like Matt and my daughter were sitting there talking about her summer plans, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, he was he was unbelievable. Uh, and the look on your face, you know, none of us are ever going to forget that. Yeah. That was, that was a cool moment. People always ask, did you know he's coming? I was like, I had no idea. They're yeah. like, how, how, how'd you know all that stuff about Mount Ryan? I was like, right. I'm a little bit of a fan. Of yeah, a little, little bit of a fan, but I just love that moment there at the end there where you guys both said the exact same thing. Yeah. It just shows you guys are on the same page. As a man crush unfolded mm -hmm. in front of everyone's yeah. eyes right here on, <laughs> on Callaway Live was, was really good. And then I think as we, one of the things about the show I, I also like is um, I love talking to business leaders. You saw that yeah. with Brian Nickel. Right. I love talking about leadership and culture and innovation. Certainly the Big Chalupa right. represents all of that. Met the Big Chalupa through David Novak, who's on season mm -hmm. one, who's one of my, my all-time you know, biggest heroes in, in business. And then when we can marry that up with sports, it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Remember we had uh, Terry McGurk yeah, and, Greg and, uh, and Greg Maffei on the show. Terry, of course, CEO of the Atlanta Braves, mm -hmm. who also happened to be my favorite team. And... Um, and Greg Maffei, the CEO of Liberty. Liberty, who owns the Braves. And then they introduced us to Rob Manfred, the, the commish of yeah. baseball. Yeah, how cool was that? That the commissioner of baseball, one of the busiest people in all of sports, made time to come down and do Callaway Live and enjoyed it. Loved it. That was a major highlight for Callaway Live. Is there's, a, there's a whole historical perspective and a legacy and a tradition of the sport, but at the same time, you have to be responsible for innovating in order to grow the game. How do you balance those two things at the same time? You, you know, you ask a great question because it's actually the hardest thing about the, the job. You know, I have great respect for the history and tradition of the game uh, on the one hand. Um, on the other hand, no institution, even if something like baseball that's woven into our culture and really important uh, to the American psyche, can stand still. It has to move. It has to adjust to the way people are living their lives. And what, what we've tried to do is listen to what our fans say. We're really research-driven. Um, I'll give you a great example. Maybe the best one is instant replay. Um, you know, traditionalists were, you know, why do you need instant replay in baseball? Um, our research showed that there was a really fundamental desire among our fans, our most avid fans in particular, for us to use technology that was available to get important calls right. And when you know where your fans are, you can kind of thread the needle between respecting history and tradition and moving the game forward. Sometimes when we talk to the great business guys and innovators, 
they end up part of our company, like the Travis Matthew guys. I know. How cool was that? You know, one of the great acquisitions this year that Callaway made was the Travis Matthew, uh, you know, clothing brand. Everything. I'm actually wearing one of their shirts right now. Nice. I don't know. So, so looks kind good of product on their uh, in their catalog. Yeah, it looks way better on the website than it does on me. But having those guys in here, they were a blast, weren't they? And the they, whole oh, I think they like the vibe that we do because mm -hmm. you know you see a show like this, and obviously a bunch of planning goes into it. But we also like to. Really? Yes, oh. we also like to not plan so much mm -hmm. so that maybe some weird stuff unfolds as you're watching it happen. And I think that's one of the things we really like about the participation of, of the folks here at Callaway and the show, because a lot of times you get a lot of weird stuff that happens that you and I are of the same camp, and so is the, the crew that works on the show. It's right. like, let's, let's put it out there. And, and I don't know if you know this, Harry, there's a little competition brewing among the Zoo crew members as to who can get in the most cold opens. And the guys you're about to see here are neck and neck for that top spot. That's really sad. Hey, hey, man. Hey, man. I got to tell you, Ethan, you come up with some awful ideas, but every now and then, you have a great idea. It's not even plugged in. It's plugged in. I'm talking. You're not even wearing pants. What the? Ah! Man, jailbreak in a football, really? It's gonna be fine. Here, check this out. I'll, I'll show you. Perry, uh, no, no! Toast you on what is that? What are you even supposed to do with that thing? I'm not gonna let you leave until you believe you're a better putter. Are you serious? I am. You gotta oh. give me this thing. What are you, what are you crying for? I'm not crying. I'm crying is be crying. Don't cry is a happy moment. Live show, no script. What could possibly go wrong? None of those people are trained actors. Can you believe that? Really? <laughs> what makes you think that? <laughs> After seeing that, it, that's just dreadful. We got to rethink that. For maybe season maybe four. season four. If, if anyone has any ideas, hit us up on Twitter. Hit Harry up on Twitter. And let us, let us I love it. And I tell you what. I tell you. <laughs> every now and then we have. Uh, <laughs> most of the time we have pretty horrible ideas, as you just saw there. Every now and then we have a great idea, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give this one to you because I think it was your idea. We had Michelle Wee on the show. Yeah. That was probably not your idea. That no. would, that, that would have been obvious. But then you thought. Let's get Michelle's favorite band, our favorite band, the Iration. Official brand, the official band, band of Callaway. Of yeah. Callaway, Iration, to come on the show while Michelle's here and see what happens. Yeah, the only thing that was funny about that, I don't even know this part of the story, was that when we talked to Micah uh, and Micah, we're like, hey, can you guys come down, play acoustic, and we'll surprise Michelle Wee. So if I said to you, we're going to surprise Michelle Wee, what's the one thing you wouldn't do? I wouldn't tell Michelle Wee. Right, they texted Michelle Wee. We're so excited to see you on Callaway Live tomorrow. So we kind of lost the surprise element, but they were awesome. Everyone had a good time, uh, and I think it just made it added to the show because it also stopped the entire show from uh, you asking her about twerking. I think that was smart. It was mm -hmm. almost like the time when Velardo had his surprise birthday party, and I did I forgot about that, and I said, "What are you doing this weekend?" He goes, "I don't know. I think I don't know what I'm doing Saturday." I go, "Oh, isn't it your party Saturday?" He goes, "What?" I go, "Nothing." Oh, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Fallen. Ah. We met at a concert. You were wearing Converse. I'm not good at playing dead cool. You said I was funny. I spent all my money. Then your friend got thrown in the pool. When we said goodbye, know that I can't lie. I never thought I'd see you again. That was I mistaken. Now my heart is taken. It's too hard to comprehend. That I'm falling, hoping that you feel this way too. Said I'm falling, sitting here waiting for you. Expert of illusion, I just got to use it. Thought I had it all worked out. Love us the stage name, watched it as it became something I could live without. Then to my surprise, you opened my eyes. I thought I was empty inside. Now every time you're near, stormy skies become clear. Now there's no one left to hide. And I'm falling. Hoping that you feel this way too. Said I'm falling. Sitting here waiting for you. And I'm falling.
falling Hoping that you feel this way too Since I'm falling Michelle Falling in <laughs> city <laughs> to anyone Said I'm falling, Harry Falling <laughs> Hoping that you feel this way Beautiful yeah. Said I'm falling Everybody Falling in city Can everybody sing? I'm falling, falling, yeah. sitting here waiting for. Back to you, Harry. All right. I'm falling, falling, <laughs> hoping that you. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Right? <laughs> Said I'm falling, sitting here waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think they should have had me sing with Iration again. Remember when I did that? I think, that I think you did. You did. It seems to be a recurring them. theme on Cowboy Live. I sing with professional musicians mm -hmm. horribly. But you know what? The professional musicians are so great about it, and they make you feel like you weren't horrible. <laughs> yeah, they really, they really are nice. I think it's because we give them free clubs. Well, there is that. There is that. Yeah. Well, it was a great season. Yeah. Congrats again to you yeah, and the same team. Same to you. And a lot of fun walking back through uh, the past year. But I think I think you have a big announcement to make. No, we're gonna. I think mm -hmm. we're gonna be back for season four next year. All right. And because I already have a bunch of people that have committed to do the show, which is great. Which is another fun thing about Callaway Live is we have a lot of people now that we know are gonna be on the show for right. next and, year. And uh, we promise you, we're gonna figure out what the Arnets are, and we're gonna. I may just be like your kids yeah. and Doug. So, and we'll make show. the show will be a little different. So what you saw yeah. this year will be not be what you see next year. But thank you all for watching yeah, the show thanks, all everyone. season long. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure for us to do the show for you. Mm -hmm. And now our job is to spend the next few months coming up with great ideas for season four. So we better get started on that. Yeah, go start on it right now. Thanks for everybody for watching. See we'll see you next year on Callaway Live.